Today we have here a PC that has been fully submerged in flood water in Queensland in Australia. Now, when I heard about this computer, I was actually very upset to hear the story. And if you guys didn't know, uh, recently in Southeast Queensland, there was massive flooding and a lot of people got their whole homes destroyed and in ways a lot of their lives were affected heavily by this. And so me uh, hearing this story about the person um, losing their gaming PC and that they think it's just completely gone and they're just reaching out for help. When I heard the story, I decided to jump on this one and also another PC that we did in yesterday's video, I'll put the link up here, where this one is gonna be much more of a difficult task where this PC here today was, again, fully, completely underwater. It's even got traces of mud going through this graphics card. This is gonna be a very difficult fix, but it's one that I'm definitely gonna to attempt to do and try my best to restore this back to life. Now, there is one key uh, component here. When I heard this, I think we might have a chance of getting this working again. And that is after the floods, the person did not try to boot up the PC, which is very important because if you try to turn it on and there's different uh, circuits that are shorting, that can completely destroy the components. So it was some decent news to hear that they did not try to boot the PC up. And that's anything electronic. If it's been submerged in water, don't try to boot it up. So what we're gonna do right now is take all these components out and then take all the heat sinks off and bring them back to their bare raw form. And then we're gonna put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and let the tech yes loving begin. That's what, if you guys are watching this for the first time, that's when I clean the components up as best as they can be and try to make them look like brand new. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So now we've pulled this whole build apart and we've also pulled the heat sinks off the graphics card and the motherboard, and we've also taken apart the power supply, we can start to uh, put this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I'm gonna put the most important stuff in there first, that's the RAM, the CPU, the motherboard, the cooler, the GPU, and then from there we'll try and clean these components and then uh, dry them out and then give them some multi-purpose spray one by one, and after we've cleaned out all the components and got them all looking as clean as possible again and there's no water left on them i'm then going to try and boot them up but we can see even by looking at this msi cooler here on this graphics card the rtx 3070 ti you can see that this thing is definitely looked like it has been in better condition in a previous life so we're going to try our best to restore this to its former glory So while our ultrasonic cleaner is busy cleaning up with round one, we're gonna start cleaning up some of the bigger stuff as well as bathing down case screws and then specialty screws and uh, letting them sit in multi-purpose spray just to get any rust off and clean them up. And we're also gonna be hosing this case down and these other brackets with multi-purpose spray too to try and lift off this real sort of ingrained floodwater, rusty water that is sort of made this case look like it's aged. Uh, also this fan, I forgot to take this off. I will take that off now and place it in the round two of the ultrasonic bath. But uh, let's get crack a lacking.
So we have now finished the ultrasonic clean round one. And what we're gonna do with these parts is we have to dry them all out, which we're gonna use a data vac for, which is meant for dusting, but I actually use it to completely dry the parts off. And then we're gonna apply some multi-purpose spray, especially to this cooler here, since it did clean the surface, but in between the fins is still really, really dirty in my opinion. So we're just gonna give this the best chance we can give it and then we're gonna hope it all works out. And here we are after drying off these parts and then spraying them down with multi-purpose spray. I've actually pretty much used up almost a whole can in just today's video so far. But what we've got right now is parts that are ready for the initial test. I wanna really, if I can get the motherboard CPU and the graphics card, the RAM and the SSD to all work, that's actually going to be the most like happiest part for me because that's pretty much the core of this build that will be working again. The all-in-one cooler and the power supply, I will get onto them if this stuff ends up working because they're a little bit more finicky, especially the uh, water cooler. I, I have to, I mean, it won't open in the core of the water cooler, so that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to figure out. But at least with this stuff, if we can get the most important stuff working, I think, it's gonna be an absolute thriller. <laughs> and that right there, tech yes citizens, is how it's done. We've booted up into Windows. We've got a signal. Everything has booted up. And that's the main component. That is the most important part. The SSD works, the RAM works, the graphics card is looking like it's working fine too. Jake, wherever you are right now, you might be seeing this and hopefully this will at least put a smile on your face because I'm pretty confident we can get this whole thing back to the way it was before it got rummaged.
So this right here, tech, yes, citizens, is what it is all about. We have this PC booted up and it looks like it is functioning 100%. Now I've still got to run it through some stress tests, which is what I'm going to do now, just to make sure the CPU temperatures are fine when we stress it. The graphics card, make sure that is fine when we stress test it. But I don't know if I'm more excited or Jake's gonna be more excited because this right here is my biggest testament to date. Getting a PC that was submerged in flood water and bringing it completely back to life and every single component is working. So <laughs> I like, I, I'm actually shocked that we got this all in the end to come back. That's like, I don't know guys, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this one because this is that, that tech yes loving. It's, I think it's peaking out right now because <laughs> this is just, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of ecstatic. I'm, I'm actually really shocked. I thought something would be damaged in this system, but we've got it, even all the fans are not, there's nothing, there's no noises, no odd noises. The, uh, all six fans are working. The LEDs on this screen, it's perfectly working. Whew. And the water cooler as well. You may be thinking, well, maybe the water cooler is not working properly, but the water, I can feel it. It's flowing through this pump and it's working full force it's absolutely fine now i also decided while i was at it to uh change the orientation of the system a little bit i uh moved two of the fans up to the top here and created a bit more rgb in the middle of the build and also the aorus fans i decided to uh, leave the rgb off on those as to reduce a bit of clutter but as well uh jake won't have to install any additional rgb software on his desktop so i thought I'd make some personal changes as well as removing those uh, two custom cables on the motherboard and GPU. Uh, those, the reasons I took them off and I tried to uh, avoid using those cables was because they were just saturated in flood water and they were the softest material in this build. So even if I did clean them in ultrasonic cleaner, I believe they would still carry a lot of that flood sort of water sa like saturation in the actual cables. And uh, in the process, we also reduced the uh, cable clutter as well. So this build, let's, uh, let's wrap it all up and do some stress testing. And after playing some games for a couple of hours, we had absolutely no problems, but a smooth experience. And this PC is now ready to hand back to Jake. And hopefully there can be some smiles that comes out even after a devastating event such as a flood. But today's journey, I am absolutely spent. We took apart this PC piece by piece and then we cleaned it down with the ultrasonic cleaner. After that, I had to do some additional cleaning with the multi-purpose spray, especially where there was bits where there was a little bit of surface rust building up. And then we took that off, we dried it all down, made sure there was absolutely no water in the parts, and then we applied the multi-purpose spray again just to protect the parts and hopefully give them a long-lasting future. Now, hopefully one thing that comes out of this video is if you guys have friends that have PCs that got submerged in water, say they're at work at the time and they couldn't get their belongings from their house, at least if that PC hasn't been turned on since, and that was actually something uh, really good that Jake did, was he didn't try to turn this PC on after the flood. And so that means there was a chance to get this stuff working again. 
And so what we did here today was we just showed you guys that if you can clean the stuff down and then dry it the same day and give it a very thorough clean down, then you can get the stuff working again. And I was actually shocked to see that every single component on this PC started working again. All four of those eight gigabyte sticks are registering, they overclock with the XMP profiles and also the Ryzen 7 5800X is running completely fine as well as the graphics card. And even the M.2 with all the data is still retained. So there's no losses to Jake except some custom cables, but I'm sure Jake's gonna be able to live without those custom cables. And with that aside guys, I'm gonna now jump in the shower and give myself some tech yes loving. <laughs> You know what guys, we're just gonna leave that one in there and uh, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the after with this gaming PC. Do you think we did a good job here today? And also if you've helped out people as well in similar situations, then do leave a comment below. Let us know those stories. I love reading them just like this question of the day here, which comes from Phoenix Phoenicia and they ask, hi, I'm planning to get a new PC. I need your advice about the PC specs below. And so they go through the PC specs and basically they say, do you think it's worth the total price for the specs above? Need some suggestions, thank you. So basically looking at this, you've only got eight gigabytes of um, DDR4 memory. Now, I'm assuming that's a single stick. So you'd wanna get two eight gigabyte sticks for dual channel with a new gaming PC, especially with the i5 12400F and the RTX 3060. So what I would do just by looking at the specs here, everything looks pretty solid, except I'd try and add in another eight gigabyte stick. And if you're on a strict budget, what you can do is I'd probably say, go with something like a gigabyte B660. It's gonna be absolutely fine with an i5 12400F. Then use that remaining money that you've saved going from that MSI motherboard to get that extra eight gigabytes of memory and then you'll make it. So there's two sticks of memory in the motherboard and you'll have a great smooth gaming experience. Hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And with that aside, I'm gonna get on out of here finally. And also if you wanna become a member, get some behind the scenes access with the vlogs, then for as little as a dollar a month, you can become a member by hitting that join button and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.